straight to the oil. Well, yes, if there is an announced star of the A2 native super sport segment, it is her, the new twin cylinder from Noel motorcycle that since its debut in September, I was there in Misano during the MotoGP and it was quite interesting. More than one reason exists. Aprilia specializes in small displacement bikes. Anyone who knows even a bit about the history of the Noel brand knows that the RS acronym has set thousands of boys in motion. With the RS125, a motorcycle that with its challenge has launched talents like Andrea Dovizioso, but also satisfied refined palates with the RS250. The legacy of those motorcycles arrives on the shoulders of the RS457, a motorcycle that is born to be the link also in terms of price between the RS125 and the 660. And then why not? one day to land on the powerful RSV4 1100. But the RS457 also brings the Aprilia brand worldwide, utilizing the typical characteristics of each yearly motorcycle product, refined technology and chassis. Aprilia applied the recipe promptly to the new sporty model of the RS family, a 457cc twin-cylinder engine with a 270-degree phase, a fancy feature for the 48hp segment, 175 kilos with a full tank, the maximum weight-power ratio possible in this category. Numbers made possible also by the fact that the unique aluminum frame in the segment uses the same philosophy as that of the 1660. The side plates are missing, as you can see. The steel swing arm in this case is directly infiltrated on the engine crankcase, which obviously allows to save kilograms. If suspensions are, so to speak, average, even slightly above, with 41 mm inverted fork adjustable in preload, monoshock absorber also adjustable in preload, but without leverage, and braking system by Bray with radial caliper and single 320 millimeter floating disc, where 457 stands out, is in electronic equipment. Ride-by-wire multi-map, Rain EcoSport, three-level traction control, rear ABS deactivatable like the best sports cars, backlit blocks. She doesn't miss anything. In summary, this new small Aprilia offers a great package at a reasonable price. And now let's go ahead and give it a try, shall we? We have arrived on the brand new RS457. First of all, very nice plate downloaded like the real MotoGP, adjustable saddle, which is not something so obvious, especially in this category adjustable brake lever in distance, non-adjustable clutch lever in distance. You are aware that I have a preference for both adjustable levers. Having said that, this dashboard provides very clear indications, including lap time, maximum lap speed, temperature, time, and the inserted mapping. The mappings can be changed by pressing the button located below the power button. To access the eco, rain, and sport mappings, you need to hold down the mapping button for an extended period of time. By doing so, you can observe that the rear ABS is disabled, enabling you to enter a more sporty mode of ABS. As an example, the traction control is currently set to three. Now, let's proceed to the sport mapping, which can be adjusted using the two up and down arrows on the handlebar pulse. By changing it, you can obviously change the fuel level indicator menu, water temperature, in short, it's really, and then you enter the various screens for managing the bike by holding down the right button. For a long time, you enter, as always, in the configuration menu in the vehicle. You can set the gear change, enable or disable the quick shifter and calibrate. Like all Aprilia, the tires, 
So calibrate the controls according to the tire that we are going to mount. You go back with this. The stopwatch gives you lap times, etc., etc. It tells you the service. In short, this is all you see. It seems to me a really very focused instrumentation for the type of bike we have a low priced bike. But let's say that in terms of equipment, it really has nothing to envy to the big sisters. Let's go for a ride. Finished test, beautiful day guys. As you can see, I'm not even sweaty, not to disrespect 457, but to tell you that with these bikes, you can ride all day and have a lot of fun, by the way. This is the bike I was using, Salvadori. You see, there are still the cameras with which I did a nice little turn. Beautiful, beautiful, good job, Aprilia, because these bikes, let's call them economical, are always approached with a bit of condescension. Instead, what I found here is a real bike, just a little bit smaller in scale. The bike boasts super ergonomics, perfectly angled legs, and a tank with perfect recesses. The handlebars are as wide as those of a real sports bike, providing a great feel and smooth movement. For my height, it feels like a tailor-made bike. Even the handlebars, which I am always picky about, have the perfect opening. I always criticize handlebars when they are closed, but here they are almost on the other side, almost too wide. However, I have to say that both the ergonomic design and the cycling and engine parts are perfectly centered. The bike offers an exceptional riding experience with its well-balanced features and comfortable design. I am truly impressed by its impeccable craftsmanship and attention to detail. The saddle is well made, the foam is well chosen, it moves very well, there are no annoying contacts. I did not detect such significant vibrations, even though on the track you are more focused on driving. It will have to be tested on the road to understand if these vibrations, a bit like at 60, considering how the footrests are fixed directly to the frame, will be evident. I have to say, in this case, I found very few vibrations. However, I repeat, on the track we have boots of a certain type. To see certain things, you have to try them a bit on the road. Obviously, it's an Aprilia. The suspensions are simple, but work very effectively, particularly the Mono, which typically on these bikes has a tendency to be somewhat deflated, a bit soft to facilitate road riding. But then on the track, it tends to be weak, yielding. In this case, the occurrence on the 457 doesn't take place as there is excellent support both from the suspension and the fork. We have utilized the fork with almost complete preloading, resulting in a highly controlled sinking motion. Although it may be slightly fast, there is no need for concern. The return of the fork, which I found a bit too fast, met my taste a little less, but in the afternoon I went to adjust the preload of the rear shock by raising it a bit, so I loaded the bike a bit more on the front and this fast return disappeared. And above all, I gained in front wheel feedback. So it was like having a front wheel with a larger section instead of the 110. Uh, the bike handled curves better. I achieved precise control and must say that in terms of this aspect, it is highly commendable because like other Aprilia bikes, the RS457 also shows exceptional responsiveness to adjustments. It does is she feels it. And we're not talking about a bike pretending to be a sports bike just because it has fairings, but it is a real sports bike. So for me, it is an ideal school ship for learning how to ride a sports bike and also for learning how to go on the track. Well, the braking system is both front and rear. The rear is a bit long. You have to look for it a bit. The front has sufficient power. You have a good grip on the lever when you need to modulate the braking. When you brake hard, 
It tends to twist a bit, obviously, because the single disc has this characteristic. But we are talking about a very violent braking here at the end of the Modena Strait. On the road, this thing will not be absolutely noticeable. For the sake of information, however, we tell you that the brake pads we used in the Modena test are pads that Aprilia offers as an accessory, so you can find them in their accessory catalog, also approved for road use, but still with a softer compound than the standard ones to be able to handle track use. The lever is adjustable. We almost always used it in the furthest position. No fatigue at all throughout the day. The sole matter to report is that I take it in a somewhat specific manner with my fingers like this. And if you lift it near, you could touch the finger, but it has never actually occurred. So everything is satisfactory. The handling is amazing. The bike enters the curve super fast, changes direction with incredible speed. Really effective, but the beauty is that even when you push it hard, like in the change of direction in the Omega in Modena, right, left, very quickly, it also tends to do that little wheelie, but it always lands. It never gets upset, always stable, always reassuring. From this perspective, very good. Talking about the bike, I liked it because when starting from a motorcycle priced at 71.99 euros, the expectation is usually that there will be cheap and ineffective components. However, everything here works really well. I, uh, I left the engine last, which is a bit the last prominent element of the RS457. Really a good job by the Aprilia technicians because they obviously focused on torque. The power, as you know, is limited by law to 48 horsepower, but they went for a very flat, very effective delivery. The engine pulls well. At 6,000, it changes the thrust. The delivery is flat. Let's say it goes beyond 10,000 RPM, but at 9,000, it is better to change because the impulse of this twin cylinder weakens, which has a beautiful pull below. Elastic helps exit curves well. When I got on, the initial accelerations, which are the ones that leave you with a bit of a thrill, I mentioned, but the bike accelerates, all right, I don't have to wait for it. You can feel that there is a good power delivery. Undoubtedly emphasize the ride by wire. The engine brake management operates very effectively. Today, we only experimented with the sport mapping, of course, but I must say everything is perfectly calibrated as Aprilia knows how to do it because Aprilia has no problems whatsoever with this type of electronic elements. He fears no competitor. At the transmission level, everything is excellent. Quick shifter works well. Optional feature I find essential. And then the clutch, it's a wireless one. Cable seems unattached, very soft. Maybe attachment is a bit far. I expected earlier engagement, but it's a bit late. Let's say that. But cable really seems like disconnected from this point of view. Anyway, Aprilia has done an impressive job overall. The controls, maybe for many of you, they may seem useless on a 48 horsepower motorcycle actually. In my opinion, since these types of motorcycles are used by inexperienced users, the controls are necessary. And as we have always used level one and rear ABS deactivated, I must say that the traction control has never come into operation today. We use the motorcycle with the Super Corsa SP V4 tires. So not with the stock tires, so with road tires, yes, but of the highest level and also the ABS. I have to compliment it because even when braking at the end of the straight, it is a braking a bit downhill, quite important. The rear wheel would lift a bit without ever feeling any pulsations from the ABS. So from this point of view here, it's good. Not sure if with a double disc, maybe that deflection would vanish, but we might lose maneuverability. So in the end, the blanket is always a bit short and inadequate. Maybe it's okay like this too, because a single floating disc like this ensures enough power. All good in the end, it is a bike that it surprised me enough, I must say, because I had a lot of fun driving here in Modena. It is her home. Practically, the track is small. Surely in this category, it will be tough for everyone. Here, more or less, is everything I wrote down about the RS457 here in Modena. If I forgot something, ask me in the comments below. If you want to know something more, ask me in the comments below. As you can see, we didn't try it with a passenger because we were on the track. The tail is single-seater, very nice, by the way. However, 
I must say that the package offered by the 457 at the price at which it is offered is really a very, very interesting package. Who knows if we will be able to maybe organize a small comparison with its competitors, which are starting to be many, Ninja 500, CBR 500, CF Moto 450. We will see why it is becoming a segment that makes you itch a little. And then, guys, we filmed all day, we had fun. The nice thing is it's a real motorcycle, just a little smaller, and it's fun even if you're experienced like I am, or rather more than an experienced old man, but you really have a lot of fun. Here below in the comments, I recommend you write whatever you want. We'll see you in the next video.